see here this is national power grid to supply electricity now the study was going on story was going on sunny's mother begin her day by switching on the geyser she irons sunny's school uniform means she does everything to prepare him for the school but when sunny you know he initiates for the school he forgets to switch off lights and fans this is the moral of this uh, text actually so not switching off lights and fan is the wastage of money wastage of power power saved is power produced so energy actually power or energy these are these are similar terms while in physics they are different but they play a very vital role in our lives we need power for industry agriculture transport communication defense and many other places so we can categorize them broadly into conventional and non conventional resources so let us see them conventional resources are what those these are the resources of energy or converse, conventional sources of energy are those which we have been using for long time common use for long time like firewood like fossil fuels these are two main conventional energy sources if we talk about firewood then for cooking and heating it is widely used in our country more than 50% of the energy used by villagers they come from firewood so we were talking about the conventional sources of energy oil oil first we'll see the advantages natural gas also advantages then we'll see the disadvantages so oil it is easier to transport in tankers and this is the basis of petrochemical industry while natural gas again it, through pipelines you can easily transport it and this is cleaner than oil and coal and cheaper than oil natural gas but what are the disadvantages the depletion of oxygen due to oil spill spillage and gas leakage this is an important and you know it's a concern for us and pollutants released cause acid rain because pollutants because if they are in gaseous form mainly they go up higher the troposphere and when the rain comes then with the rain these pollutants this acidic pollutants they come down and they mix it mix with uh, you know with water and various other places so they are they are actually contaminating the environment and then exploration of new fuel is uh, not very easy and then firewood we were talking about conventional sources of energy firewood coal hydel power so firewood what are the advantages it's easily accessible provide energy to a large number of people as we said 50% in our country more than 50% and what are the disadvantages collection takes a long time pollute it's polluting because it uh, the dhua or you can say the ash come out the gas come out the ash remains and it also promotes in greenhouse effect it increases the temperature of our earth and then deforestation if you cut tree that is called deforestation that is again harmful for us when we talk about coal the advantage is it is extensively available and efficient conversion to electricity but disadvantage is again it's a polluting source and it's quite heavy like bulky bulky to transport when we look at hydel power it's non polluting it it promotes irrigation and fishing and it's quite cheap but the disadvantages are when we talk about or you know install any hydel power project local community is displaced inundates low and it's expensive to set up at first go so these were few advantages and disadvantages then the remains of uh, plants and animals buried under earth for billions of years because of heat and pressure inside the the earth it transforms these plants and animals to fossil fuels fossil fuel like coal petroleum natural gas these are main sources of conventional energy and the reserves are limited 
but the way we are consuming the population is consuming the formation takes millions of years so it will be exhausted soon here is a woman carrying firewood in northeast india 50% more than 50% in our country they use firewood for cooking and other purposes coal this is the most abundant abundant or abundantly found fossil fuel we use it for domestic fuel in industries like iron and steel as steam engines to generate electricity so electricity from coal is called thermal power you see here is thermal power it's a thermal power station the coal we are using today was formed millions of years ago when giant ferns and swamps they got buried into layers of earth that is why coal is called as buried sunshine because it's form because of the burial so the leading coal producers of world are china usa germany russia south africa and france and uh, india coal we can find in raniganj we are find finding it in jharia dhanbad bukaro in jharkhand now let us talk about the black gold that is petroleum the petroleum word has come from latin words petra petra means rock oleum means oil so petroleum means rock oil so the petrol that keeps your car running bike running both uh, begin as thick black liquid called petroleum we in the, we call them as we call it as crude oil crude oil so it is found between the layers of rocks and it is drilled from oil fields located in offshore and coastal areas then it is sent to refineries then the, this crude oil is processed to produce variety of products like diesel petrol kerosene wax plastics and lubricants because of this derivatives petroleum derivatives this petroleum is called as black gold why because it is very valuable so the chief petroleum producing countries are iran iraq saudi arabia and qatar other producers usa russia venezuela and algeria and uh, in india the leading producer in india are digboi in assam bombay high in mumbai and deltas of krishna and godavari rivers then coming to natural gas first let me tell you about cng compressed natural gas this is a popular economic friendly automobile fuel and it causes less pollution than petroleum and diesel so natural gas is found with petroleum deposits and it is released when this crude oil is brought to the surface so we can get natural gas from there it uh, can be used as domestic and industrial fuel who are the major producers russia norway uk netherlands in india jaisalmer krishna godavari delta tripura and offshore mumbai they have natural gas resources and uh, very few countries in the world have sufficient natural gas reserves but the sharp increase in the consumption of this fossil fuel has led to an alarming rate of depletion the toxic pollutants coming out of these fuels when we burn them again a cause of concern the unchecked burning of fossil fuel is like a checked unchecked driving tap that is going to run dry eventually and that is why it has led to tapping of various non conventional sources of energy that are cleaner alternatives to fossil fuels and they are renewable also hydropower do you know norway was the first country in the world to develop hydroelectricity so rain water and river water see this, this is an example rain water and uh, this river water is in dam this is um, made to fall from height so this is at certain height it is made to fall like this now this falling water flows through pipes inside the dam over turbine blades these are the turbine blades placed at the bottom of the dam so these moving blades then turn the generator to produce electricity this is called as hydroelectricity now the water which is coming here this can be used for irrigation and one fourth of the world's electricity that is 25% is produced by hydropower 
And who are the leading producers of hydropower? Paraguay, Norway, Brazil, China. In India, we have Bhakra Nangal, Gandhi Sagar, Nagarjun Sagar, and Damodar Valley projects for hydel based electricity production. This is the Salal hydroelectric project in Jammu and Kashmir. So, non conventional sources of energy because fossil fuel are they will be depleted and the way we are using it will be exhausted soon and moreover it's a cause of environmental pollution so there is a need for using non conventional sources like solar energy wind energy tidal energy which are renewable as a source of energy so solar energy first let me tell you that or let me take you through this non conventional source of energy we'll start with the wind, ener wind energy we'll see all these with the advantages and disadvantages so wind, wind energy advantages are they are it's see non polluting will come everywhere mostly everywhere not in this uh, nuclear energy but still will come everywhere non polluting wind energy low cost production of electricity once it is being set up and safe and clean but wind energy create noise pollution and very costly to set up windmills it disturbs the radio waves that is radio and tv reception and harmful for birds because it has blades and it, it these blades rotates if something comes in between they will get killed then solar energy again advantages solar in inexhaustible non polluting disadvantage is you know harnessing solar energy is expensive and diffuse source so it gets wasted tidal energy again non polluting inexhaustible but it destroys wildlife habitat and also tidal energy is difficult to harness you need a proper place proper uh, you can say area where you can actually get uh, high tidal energies then non conventional sources of energy we are talking about nuclear energy advantage is a huge amount of energy it releases but it also generates the radioactive waste and expensive also to harness biogas advantage low cost easy to operate and makes use of bio waste only because they are waste and then uh, disadvantages are it causes greenhouse effect it increases the temperature when we talk about geothermal energy the advantage is clean eco friendly always available but the disadvantage is very few places it is found located far away from cities and so costly to transport the electricity once it is being created generated so we were talking about solar energy sun's heat and light energy this can be felt by us every day and solar energy trapped from the sun uh, we can use them in solar cells to produce electricity see these are the solar panels used and many of these cells they are actually joined into solar panels to generate the power for heating and lighting purposes the technology of utilizing this solar energy it benefits lot of tropical countries that are blessed with lot of sunshine abundant sunshine and solar energy is also used in solar heaters solar cookers solar dryers beside being used for community lighting and traffic signals kochi kochi airport in india is the first airport which uses only solar energy no other, other energy now coming to wind energy wind is inexhaustible windmills have been used for grinding cranes and lifting water since uh, you know if you go to past so in modern times windmills high speed uh, wind rotates the windmill which is connected to a generator to produce electricity so wind farms having clusters of these windmills they are located generally in the coastal regions in mountain passes where they have strong and steady wind flows very heavy, very fast uh, flowing air is there you will find the wind farms in netherland germany denmark uk usa spain is also noted for wind energy production now coming to nuclear power before that the site of the world's first solar and wind powered bus shelter is in scotland so we were talking about nuclear power you see this is the nuclear power station of kalpakkam so there are certain you know if i go to physics the nuclear fission and nuclear nuclear fusion these are Uh, some reaction which take place and nuclear fusion creates a lot of energy so this can be used when nucle the nucleus 
divides into two parts, a lot of energy is released. So nuclear power is obtained from energy which is stored in the nuclei of atom, naturally occurring radioactive elements like the uranium and uh, thorium. So uranium, thorium. So every every uh, thing cannot be used like this for nuclear power. We need to have radioactive elements like uranium and thorium. Now we were talking about nuclear fission. So nuclear fission can be used in nuclear reactors to emit power. The greatest producer, USA, Europe, in India, Rajasthan and Jharkhand, they have large deposits of uranium. Thorium is found in large quantities in the monazite sand of Kerala. The nuclear power station in India, first we saw as Kalapakkam as you see in the picture. They are located in Kalapakkam, in Tamil Nadu, Tarapur in Maharashtra, Rana Pratap Sagar near Kota in Rajasthan and Narora in Uttar Pradesh and Kaiga in Karnataka. So here is how nuclear energy is produced. Here we have heat because nuclear fission generates energy, heat. So this water, water is being passed and the hot water is uh, employed to produce steam. These steam, uh, this, this is a turbine. So this steam rotates the turbine and this is attached to generator and this generator produces the electricity. Here is uh, the picture of geothermal energy in Manikaran and here we are cooking food with the help of geothermal energy. So geothermal energy, heat energy obtained from the earth because earth is very hot. If you, if you talk about crust, it's thousands of temperature degrees centigrade. So that heat may come up somewhere, you know, in various places that heat can be used. So heat energy obtained from the earth is called geothermal energy. The temperature, uh, if you go inside, the temperature increases. Sometimes this heat may surface as hot springs. So this heat energy can be used to generate power. And geothermal energy is in the form of hot spring. This has been used for cooking and heating and bathing for several, several, uh, you know, years. USA has the world's largest geothermal power plants, followed by New Zealand, Iceland, Philippines, Central America, in India. We have Mani Karan in Himachal Pradesh and Puga Valley in Ladakh. So let me show you how it is being done here. So here we have these uh, natural cracks. So this steam is coming. This steam is used. Here we have well water. So this steam is used to rotate the turbine. Then we have generator. Then it like generate the electricity. Then we have tidal energy. Energy generated from tides because tides are because of air and tides have because water is there. So tide has huge amount of energy. So tidal energy can be harnessed by building dams at narrow openings of the sea. You see, this is very important. Narrow openings of the sea where the speed can be harnessed of the wave. So during high tide, the energy of the tide is used to turn the turbine installed in the dam to produce electricity. Russia, France, Gulf of Kutch in India, they have huge tidal mill farms. So this is how it has been done. This is low tidal, tidal energy is used to produce electricity. So here we have low tide, here we have high tide. So this, when it comes, this is used to the, rotate the turbine. Here also rotate the turbine. And we know always that high tide and low tide because water comes to one place, means near the shore and then, then it recedes back. So when it is coming and when it is going, it is having a huge velocity or speed so that can be used to rotate these, these uh, turbines. Now coming to biogas. This is how biogas is done. Here we put the content, then gas tank. Here we have some bacteria act, acting on all the waste. And then the slurry is produced. After the gas we take out, this slurry can be used as compost or manure. So organic waste like dead plants, animal material, animal dung, kitchen waste, we can convert them into gaseous, gaseous fuel called the biogas. So the organic waste is decomposed by bacteria in this biogas digester to emit biogas, which is what? Which is actually CH4 and CO2, methane and carbon dioxide. So biogas is excellent fuel for cooking and lighting and produce huge amount of organic manure. Energy is everywhere, but it is our, and it is not possible to harness it everywhere. It is somewhere costly also. So this is what we have to do. We have to save energy. So energy saved is actually energy generated. So for you, the message is that all energy we have learned, the basic idea is to conserve energy and think about the future also. So this is all about this topic. Thank you so much and take care of yourself.